Reconnaissance is the first and most important part of an attack. It's where the hacker scopes out the target and decides on the best course of action based on what they find. Now, doing this with something like uh, Nmap is pretty inefficient because it can take a very long time. But using tools like Raccoon Scanner, you can coordinate many scans all at the same time and get back a ton of information by running only a single command. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Reconnaissance is the phase of an attack where a hacker sits back and scopes out the target, trying to find any vulnerable or weakest links that could allow them to craft an easy exploit rather than taking the long way around. This ensures that any attack isn't taking unnecessary time, and instead is the most efficient one possible to make. Now to learn all this information required, you can go a couple different routes and use tools like either Multego or Nmap, but in general, you'll run up against either cost issues or time issues using these two tools. Maltego is somewhat expensive, although it's great at finding relationships between different domains, and Nmap is somewhat limited because it can only find information about domains you already know about, and you'll need to rerun the scan in order to search subsequent domains that you discover. Now, tools like Raccoon Scanner are fantastic because they coordinate a whole bunch of different scans all at the same time, conveniently organizing the information into a folder which you can read through at the end, which reads kind of like a report of all the different scans that it coordinated. It also just uses Python, so if you have Python 3.5, then you're good to go. Now the kind of information that Raccoon Scanner can find is pretty useful, because it includes things like subdomains and various other types of information about a domain and linked uh, properties on the web that can allow you to find out a lot of information about the person or organization that owns the domain. Now, this kind of tool is useful for finding vulnerabilities, and you can also run all this through Tor, so it's extra subtle in that your target doesn't even know they're being scanned by you. Now, to get started, it only takes a single command, so let's begin. Now, to get started with Raccoon Scanner, you can navigate to the GitHub page here. When you scroll down, you'll notice there's a list of all the capabilities, such as the ability to use Tor to connect when you're doing these scans. Now, it is worth noting that a lot of websites outright block Tor proxies, so if you're doing this on a website that does so, you might see limited results. Now, when you scroll down, you'll see that the instructions are pip install raccoon-scanner, which sounds good, except that doesn't actually work, at least in our installation of Kali Linux, which was fully updated. Instead, we found that the best way to do this was by running pip3 install raccoon-scanner, and in this case, we already have it installed, but if you were running it for the first time and you had Python 3, then it would be installed just fine. Now, if you get an error, it's worth trying to type just Python 3. And you can see that I have Python 3 installed and it should pop up just the same uh, and offer this command prompt if you have Python 3 installed. If not, go ahead and just install Python 3 and you should just be able to get it working fine. So to get started with Raccoon Scanner, we can type in raccoon tack, tack help, and it'll give you a list of the various commands you can do within Raccoon Scanner. Now, we'll take a look at the tack t command, which specifies the target, and we'll create a very simple search in order to go through some details about a target domain. Now to get started, I'm going to use a really simple search on a publicly available domain, and we wanted to use Priceline.org, but unfortunately we got banned after we used this the first time, uh, and of course I wanted to use it because they stranded us the last time we use it, but instead we'll just use PBS.org because it is a well-known and public domain. So we'll go ahead and type in raccoon tact PBS.org, and press enter to begin the scan. Now, as it goes through the results, you'll see that it goes through a series of scans that are run asynchronously. So this means that Raccoon Scanner is running around and doing different scans at the same time to make the overall scanning time less. Now, some of these actually rely on each other in order to be more effective. For example, the Nmap scan will run first to determine the open ports, and then subsequent scans will take advantage of that. However, a lot of these scans run independently, so you can sit back and watch the results as they come in. 
Now here you can already see that we've seen 28 different domains, we found one email address and a couple of different HTML forms, so the program will continue to try to fetch more information and compile it in the end as a report. Now you can already see that we've seen a security issue, which means that if we were an attacker, we would pretty much drop what we were doing and stop considering another more costly attack and focus in on something that is low-hanging fruit. It's also worth pointing out that some websites will respond to attempts to do scans like this by throwing up wildcard domains that will basically respond to anything that you throw at it. So in order to make sure that these results are useful, if that's important, you can always make up your own wildcard domain and just send it something that's just random and crazy and see if it responds back saying that it exists. If it does, then you probably shouldn't trust these results because it could mean that the website just uses wildcard domains. Here we can see that it's also going through the DNS dumpster to find subdomains that might not otherwise be publicly available. As you can see in these results, it's going through a list of subdomains from a brute forcing list and it's returning the ones that it gets interesting results back from. This could indicate a subdomain or service that's standardized or is maybe a web plugin with another provider that could be a different surface for an attack. Now that the scan is complete, we'll have a lot of results to interpret. So let's type ls to see the raccoon scan results folder. Type cd and raccoon scan results, and then type ls to see the different websites that you can examine that you've already done scans on. Now we'll type in cd pbs.org, and then ls to see the various scan results that have come back. Now I'll go ahead and actually open this in a folder so we can see them more clearly. Here we can see that everything is laid out nicely for us and the various scan results have been interpreted and put into these text files. First, we can take a look at the DNS results to see all the various websites that have been connected to the domain that we put into the search. We can see information like the MX result, as well as the NS number and various other information that'll help us determine things like what type of email they use. Next, we can take a look at the NMAP scan results. Now, this seems pretty standard. There's just a port 80 and port 443 that is open, but we also have the DNS and the IP address information in this report as well. Now, if we wanted to pass that to something like Nikto, we'd be able to attack or otherwise assess the domain by the IP address. We can take a look at the subdomain fuzz.txt and see all the various domains that responded to our fuzzing attempts. Now, because there wasn't a lot of them, this means that these ones are probably legitimate and not just wildcards that were generated to confuse people scanning the website. Now, we can also take a look at the subdomains.txt, which is a brute force uh, list that was compiled. And in this case, again, it looks like the DNS dumpster was helpful in turning up different subdomains that could be useful for scanning for vulnerabilities. Now, speaking of vulnerabilities, we can go through the TLS report and see that there is an alert that this does support a cipher that is vulnerable to a Suite32 attack. Now this particular attack does take a considerable amount of time and a considerable amount of data in order to actually become practical. Around 700 gigabytes worth of information needs to be, or worth of traffic needs to be generated between the web server and the client in order for this to become practical. But when it does, it does mean that this website could be vulnerable to a man in the middle attack. So it's something that an attacker might be interested in and the website should probably take a look at. Now for the URL fuzzer, we can see a list of brute force subdomains that have also returned uh, redirections, but this could also be a setting because there's a lot of different results in this. So this part is probably a little bit less useful for our purposes. Now the final result is the web application firewall, but in this case, we weren't able to detect one. If we were, we could make certain decisions about how to attack the web application firewall based on the manufacturer and the version that was detected. We can also see the webscan.txt file. Here we can see various information about the way that the CMS and other robot.txt file was detected and information that was pulled from it.
Finally, we have the basic whois.txt information here displayed for the owners of the web domain, including things like when the registration expires, who registered it, and certain contact information for the people that did. Now, some people choose to register this anonymously, but in other cases, you can identify people who might be responsible for certain portions of the operation. As these results make clear, Raccoon Scanner is capable of going beyond the typical OSINT search. This means it can even get you banned from certain websites that discourage a sort of scan. So be careful when scanning against domains that you would be upset if you were to become banned from. In addition, this can find active vulnerabilities, so that takes it a step above scans like Nmap. In a single command, Raccoon Scanner is capable of digging up a trove of information about any domain you target. Now this is useful for an attacker because it's capable of finding things like misconfigured domains or vulnerable domains that can allow you to design a very efficient attack by targeting the weakest link. For a defender, it allows you to identify these weak points and understand what attackers are working with when they're looking to attack your domain. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.